Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on onespotmedia.com. Another indication this afternoon that drought conditions across Jamaica may linger for quite a while. The director of the Meteor Meteorological Service of Jamaica gave another update this morning on TVJ's Smile Jamaica program. We have details in this report. Summer is just around the corner and Jamaica is already experiencing drought conditions. Many are concerned. The dry period usually begins in July, but this year it came earlier. Parishes such as Portland, St. Mary and St. Elizabeth are experiencing drought. St. Thomas and St. Anne are on the verge. Earlier this week, Prime Minister Andrew Holness told the country to pray for rain. Those prayers may be answered this weekend, according to Director for the Meteorological Service Division, Evan Thompson. The good news is that this weekend we could see some rain. This weekend? This weekend. Like today, here. Like today tomorrow, we could see some rain, even in the east, we could, we, because there is a trough that is producing some of the rainfall that we usually see in May. Okay. Um, and so we could see a little bit of an increase during this weekend. Island but wide. as we move... Um, Island-wide, yes, but mostly to the west. He says there's rainfall in parishes with no catchment facilities. The water for the corporate area is dependent on rainfall in the river, the watershed areas that supply the reservoirs, whether it is the Hermitage Dam or the, the Mona Dam or the Hermitage Re mm -hmm. Reservoir. And those areas are not getting enough water. Mr. Thompson adds that rainfall is up in parishes that usually record a low percentage. It's the reverse for parishes that usually have a high percentage of rainfall. That shift is due to climate change. If we look all the way to the western part of the island, there's a lot of rain occurring in the west. Um, some section, Westmoreland in particular, is getting more than its normal amount of rainfall. Also Trelawney, more than the normal, like a th about 30% more than normal occurring in those areas. Um, Hanover is getting quite a bit too. And what we are seeing is a departure from what we are n used to seeing. Because what would normally happen is that the majority of the rainfall occurs in Portland and St. Mary the west would be dry. So now we are seeing the water occurring in the west and where we're getting our water from is dry. dry. Oh, she. Who made an illegal connection to the power grid at the Walker's Place of Safety? One question that's yet to be answered following a fire at the home which left two wards of the state dead. According to documents obtained in an access to information request by human rights advocate Susan Goff, it was revealed that there were frequent disconnections at the Walker's Place of Safety due to the lack of payment of the home's electricity bills. With this fact, Ms. Goff contends that greater oversight must be had of children's homes. Although there were monitoring um, visits and monitoring reports by CPFSA as are required, um, those reports don't seem to have picked up on this pattern of um, failure to pay the utility bill and disconnections. That then points to the need for greater um, um, monitoring of that aspect of the running and management of all the facilities to do with all the utilities. It's why she's recommending that some sort of program be worked out with the Child Protection and Family Services Agency and the Jamaica Public Service Company. In the JPS's code of, of practice, they state, for example, that there is not routine disconnection of electricity to hospitals and essential services, which makes sense. Maybe it is necessary also to have some arrangement between the utility companies and the CPFSA that if there is a pending um, disconnection of service that they notify the CPFSA which then would have the opportunity to interact with JPS, to interact with the home, etc. It has led to many other questions. Ms. Goff says what is needed is a similar treatment as to what took place in the Armadale Fire, where seven wards of a state were killed. It was as though each day there was a further pulling back of the curtain that revealed to the public what the situation there was and what led to the death of these children. 
and the fact that the state of Jamaica at the, its varying levels had been completely negligent in protecting these children. She says if that kind of reporting and level of accountability which was garnered from the Armadale Commission of Inquiry is not done for the Walker's Place of Safety, the public will forever be kept in the dark. Without that kind of public reporting, we are left in a position of having to trust um, the, the state agencies which have unfortunately shown themselves repeatedly um, to act um, in ways that, that are, that impact negatively on, um, on children in the, the care and custody of the state. In the meantime, Ms. Goff is calling for an update from the Ministry of Education and Youth regarding the audit which was to be done on Children's Home Island-wide following the fire at the Walker's Place of Safety. For Shane Masters, TVJ News. Thanks, Shane. And it's time for a break. More top stories in our midday news package right after these messages. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Science and Technology Minister Favel Williams has echoed the call for tertiary institutions to align their programs with the needs of the economy. She said it's necessary to ensure graduates coming into the working world are ready to take up available jobs. Speaking earlier this week, Mrs. Williams says a special focus must be placed on science and technology as there's a demand for jobs in those areas. We have to get our private sector to partner more with universities and the work the professors are doing so that more of that work is directed in areas with commercial potential. We have to transform our country from having such a high percentage of unskilled labor. The Fair Prospect Primary School in Portland will be the beneficiaries of several water tanks from the Portland Municipal Corporation. The initiative is geared towards increasing the institution's water catchment system. As part of the parish's Labor Day project yesterday, the Municipal Corporation also committed to repairing the bathroom facilities at the school. The parish council, they will be setting up a catchment from the roof of the, the student bathroom facility. They'll be giving us some tanks and set up the catchment to, for the water so that we can use the water for the bathrooms. What is happening today will go beyond today. So for example, for the bathroom facilities, that will go beyond today, we were told. Because they're doing the roof, they'll be doing some plumbing work, they'll be doing some tiling, and as I said before, they, to set up a catchment. So it's going to go beyond today. For the in news overseas, UK Prime Minister Theresa May announced her resignation in an emotional speech on Friday, finally bowing to intense political pressure over Britain's failed Brexit deal. Standing outside Downing Street, Mrs May said she would quit as leader of the Conservative Party on June 7, but will stay on as Prime Minister until a successor is chosen. The UK Prime Minister said she had done everything to convince members of Parliament to back her three times rejected Brexit deal, but acknowledged that she had failed and it was time to step aside. But it is now clear to me that it is in the best interests of the country for a new Prime Minister to lead that effort. So I am today announcing that I will resign as leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party on Friday the 7th of June so that a successor can be chosen. I've agreed with the party chairman and with the chairman of the 1922 committee that the process for electing a new leader should begin in the following week. I have kept Her Majesty the Queen fully informed of my intentions and I will continue to serve as her prime minister until the process has concluded. And in sports, the reggae girls are not the only Jamaicans who are in preparation mode for the FIFA Women's World Cup as two of the country's FIFA assistant referees will also be participating in the tournament in France. As we hear in this report from Jeremy Brown, Princess Brown and Stephanie Yi Singh are fine-tuning their preparation, including use of the VAR system. 
Just like the reggae girls, FIFA assistant referees Stephanie Daly Yi Singh and Princess Brown are eagerly anticipating making their debuts at the FIFA Women's World Cup in France. Yi Singh and Brown are putting on the final touches to their preparation for the tournament and went through a simulation exercise with former FIFA referee Peter Prendergast on Wednesday. Among the things they were sharpening up on was the use of the video assistant referee system, VAR, which will be used at the Women's World Cup for the first time. Prenegast says the ladies are ready to shine in France. I mean, they, they are physically prepared. We have to get them now sharpened mentally. And as I said before, the concept of the use of the VAR is not like we do here. So just remind us to reinforce the concepts of how to apply the flag, when to apply the flag, when not to apply the flag. The greatest part of the communication with VAR is using the communication devices. So you would have heard them saying, position, position, no goal, no goal, play, continue. Those are some of the, the language of the VAR that they will have to be using in France. Both Yi Singh and Brown admitted to some amount of nerves as the tournament draws closer. While noting the importance of the simulation exercise, Yi Singh says they're hoping to leave an indelible mark on the tournament in France. Every competition that we get a chance to participate in, we would definitely like to leave our mark, you know, leave a great impression and show that we are capable of doing the work because we're from such a small area in the Caribbean so we're not as I said before we're not just representing ourselves and our country even so we're representing also the Caribbean and it's a, a, a great opportunity and it I hope it I hope it opens <laughs> the doors for other persons to come through Brown says she is motivated to do well at the tournament by her family and supporters from the rural district of Silo in st. Elizabeth for me I'm really happy and I think my family is happy and also my community is happy to know that somebody from Windsor Silo Mosquito Bottom have reached as far you know coming from a very far poor background and coming far from a very far far away in life you know have reached as far and achieved their goal um to be to be officiate at the world cup i think it's a great honor and i think they all feel good they all feel really good about it Yi Singh and brown will be joined by canadian referee marie salil boudoir to form one batch of match officials at the tournament a total of five referees and eight assistant referees will represent the CONCACAF region at the fifa women's world cup jeremy brown reporting for tvj sports and of course tvj tvj said and one spot media.com will have live and exclusive coverage of the fifa women's world cup and we'll also have radio coverage on hits 92 fm and that's the midday news i'm andrea chisholm do remember to join us at seven for the primetime news package on behalf of our news sports and production teams good afternoon